All right, so I want to look at input validation. So I have this program, and it just prompts for three num three things. So a number, a full name, and an amount of money. And I want to prompt for things and display information. So if I run it right now as is, I can type in good data. So 15 uh, John Doe, and it just ends. It doesn't get my whole name John Doe. It does get 15, but you know some of it's not working properly. And if I give it bad data, it's even worse. If I run hello world and I have it blue, then it doesn't even prompt for the rest of the stuff. It just prints out the prompts and has this weird number like, what even is that? Okay, so how do I validate data? So I'm asking three questions. So let's put these things right here. So first of all, I want to have a do while loop. So why a do while loop? Well, so I can make sure that the data is good. So I want to do this loop while my CN fail flag is set. So as long as the CN fail flag is set, it's going to keep prompting. So now I'll go ahead and run this again. And so I type in, what is your favorite number? Well, my favorite number is, let's say it's a blue. And then it starts prompting infinitely. So that makes an infinite loop. That's not what I want. So I want to go ahead and stop this and say, well, why is it looping infinitely? Well, there's two problems here. First of all, my flag is set. And second of all, I still have the bad data on the line. So how do I get rid of the bad data? Well, let's say we do have a failure. So if my standard CN fail flag is set, I want to fix it, right? So fix bad data on input buffer. So I say, well, first of all, how do I do it? Let's go ahead and ignore all the bad data. So if there is bad data, we'll do a CN ignore. Now, if I just do one ignore, then I'll just get rid of one character. But I can go ahead and do the rest of the line. So the int max until I get to a new line character. All right. Let's try this and see what happens. So if I run this, it should just ignore anything, right? So I go ahead and it types in, what's my favorite number? I type in seven. So that seemed to work. Now it's also possible that in addition to that number, I might have a flag set. Now the flag gets clear the next time I run the CN. So I don't necessarily need to clear it, but I could clear the flag if I thought, well, you know what? I want to figure out what bad data I got. So I could do that. So let's go ahead and stop this and we'll put the clearing the flag in there anyway, just because we decide we want to do it. So you can see what, how to do it. So I'll do a standard CN and I'll do a clear and that will do it. If I would run just the clear without taking out this ignore, Let's take a look and see what happens now. So I'll say that. So what happens is I have the C in fail flag set. It clears the flag and then goes and runs the prompt again. So I run this. What's your favorite number? And I type in blue. And then it goes in infinite loop again. And you're like, well, why is it doing that? Well, the reason is that the bad input is still there on the line. It's still there. And so it's it's going through and it's clearing the flag. It's going down here, prompting for the next prompt. And then it's trying to read in, but the read in doesn't work because I still have that new it, new line. Actually, it's like the letter B for blue still there. And so it tries to read that. It fails again and it says it's failed and it goes on. So we want to clear out the buffer and we want to ignore the stuff. All right. So that one's taken care of. The next step is to read in your full name. Well, if I'm trying to read in this full name as a, like this, it doesn't quite work properly. So what I want to do is read in this as an entire line. So I'll go ahead and change this. So I say, well, 
instead of doing this, I want to, well, use a standard and a get line. And then I'll read in from std cn and I'm going to read it into name. So there we go. That gets me the line, right? So now let's go ahead and run this. I run this. We know that my favorite number is taken care of. I give it the number 15. And it says, wait, it didn't even prompt me for my full name. What happened here? Why did it not prompt me for my full name? It just skipped it. The reason it skipped it is because after 15, I pressed enter. And the enter is still left there. And so it's now it's trying to read in the enter as my full name. So if I have an amount of money, like a 734, it says, hello, blank, would you like 15 pencils for 734? All right. So what I need to do now is I need to make sure I clear any new lines on there. Well, how do I do that? Well, first of all, I need to see what's on the buffer. And I know from right above that I should have a new line there that I need to clear out, first of all. Let's look at clearing out the buffer first. So if there is any leading white space, we can eat that up. Well, what's leading white space? Well, white space would be spaces, new line characters, form feeds, tabs, any of that stuff is all white space. So I can eat up the white space if I want. So let's do eat white space. So I do that. Well, I do SCD CN, and I'm going to read that into my STD white space. Just eat it up. So I'll be eating it up. So that would get rid of the new line character. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens now. So I type in a valid number, so 15, and then it just kind of sits there. and is waiting for more data. So that was not the right answer, right? So it's waiting and it's waiting until I actually type in something. And so I can't even type in my name because it's eating up white space. So keep that in mind, white space, you don't wanna do that. But some situations you do when you have numbers and you wanna get things in between them. All right, so what's the next thing you do? Well, let's figure out what the next character is. What if it is a new line character? So we can do a std cn dot peak. And that will read the first character on the line. And if it is a, well, some character we don't want, we can eat it up. It doesn't actually take it off of the line. It's just looking at it. So I do if this standard in peak equals my new line which it should right then i can do a get line actually not get line uh i can do ignore cn ignore by itself which will just ignore a single character so Let's go ahead and run this now and see what happens. So favorite number is 15. And now it says my full name. I do John Doe. Amount of money, 734. All right. It says, hello, John Doe. Would you like to buy 15 pencils for 734? So that looked like it worked correctly. So that's actually really good. We were able to solve it by looking at it, seeing that it was a new line, and just ignoring the next character, or basically eating it up and cleaning it out. This one right here, you'd use for other situations. But just so you know, not to use that one. And then you'd want to do some input validation for this one as well. So another do while loop, so do, and a while. And it's just like the one above, right? So you want to make sure that if it is bad data, you want to copy up this stuff right here. You want to copy that and go in here and you put it inside of our do while loop. So if we have a bad buffer there, we want to clean it out. 
to while our cn fail, we want to continuously just keep prompting for it until we get good data. All right. So I hope this makes sense. Let's go ahead and run it and let's see what happens. Favorite number 15, John Doe, and Apple. It didn't like that. So we go ahead and stop that. Shrink this down. And we'll look at it. You can see right now I've got a do while loop. So if CN fail, then we want to ignore all the way until we get to a new line and then clear out the flag, prompt for a new amount of money, and then we want to read into amount. Another thing you can do is eat up any bad data. So we know that we're trying to read in a, a decibel number, which means that we want to read until we get a digit, right? So what you could do is just do inside your loop a little skip phase, right? So you do while, so skip non-digits, and let's do um, while, and we can use this peak thing again, right? So a standard CN peak, and we get a digit back, right? Or a character, while not is digit. So while this is not a digit, what we want to do is just skip the digit. So how do we do that? Well, we just ignore one, right? So CN ignore. Now this could be a little bit problematic. Um, it could cause all kinds of weird things like you're just sitting there waiting. But we can go ahead and try this out and see what we think. So, so I'll go ahead and run this piece of code and we'll see what happens. So here number is 15. My full name is John Doe and you can see it's not even prompting at all. So that's not really what we want, right? Maybe we want to display the text first and then skip it. So I'll take this code right here, cut it out, Go down here and after words, I want to display this right here. So go ahead and skip all my non digits and then ignore. So if I run this code right here, I have number 15, John Doe, and I say blue. It's still waiting. So I say fine, fine, I'll pay it 734. And that puts it here. So you do have to kind of figure out what is it you're willing to wait for. Do you want to just skip all the digits and wait for things? Or what kind of behavior do you want? Anyway, there are lots of ways to validate input. You can check to see what the next characters are and skip anything that's not a digit. Uh, you could even add more into this one where if it's a new line, you could reprompt them with the with the same question again and say, well, you typed in something that wasn't a digit, so I'm going to tell you what I what I want again. Or you could make it so that it's looking for dots and things like that. So anyway, keep in mind you can use the peak, you can use the ignore, you can Set the and look at the flags. You can look at the clear, you can clear the flags, all these different things in order to get your data and make sure that your data coming in is valid.